Hi beautiful souls, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a first impressions video of the other Kin Tarot by Ciela Thompson. This is her latest tarot deck, the fourth one. I have all of them in my collection and I am a fan of her artwork. I have already taken off the cello as you can see and we're going to get right to the cards in a second. So it does come in the same box as the Lime Strider and the Hedge Witch. And I think this is important to just to have a look at this before we start the cards because we're going to um, enter into a strange and familiar world, both other and kin. Uh, this is a deck filled with marvelous beings who inhabit the liminal space between myth and fact, human and animal. A lion with the body of a man sits on the emperor's throne. A sagacious owl acts as a hierophant. The frogs and foxes take on human garb. So it is Rider Waite Smith, and it is a combination of human and animal form. So it's going to have kind of a, a real mythological feel to it. These are the cards, the card backs. So it, like the Lion Strider, it has that uh, ink blot look to the back. The Lion Strider back it looks like this. Right, if you remember the line strider. So this is more of an ink blot, but this one actual actually has um, animals on the back. The hummingbird, the wolf, the deer. And then we have some kind of a, perhaps an iguana or a bug here in the center. Anyway, really beautiful. Nice neutral colors. And if you fan the cards this way, you'll see it's not all white like the um, Hedge Witch and the Lion Strider. It had the card backs have multiple colors on them. Kind of reminds me of her Lenormand deck. Um, I have that here. So this is the Lenormand deck. And it also has different colors for the backgrounds. So same art, same kind of art style, but just, um, yeah, more colors for the background. I, it's my intention to do a reading at the end, and I think what I'm going to do is pull in all four of her decks and and do a reading that way so you can really get a feel for her cards if you don't have them in your collection. I really like the fool. I like the expression of his body with the hips kind of moving forward. There's a real carefreeness and almost um, jauntiness to his step. It's really fun. And the leaves... You know, some of these leaves actually kind of looks like candy wrappers. Multicolored feather. There's a real um, lightness to this card, which is really special. And this, the tea stain on this card, if you want to call it that, this actually looks like the sun up here, which is kind of cool. And then the dog. When I first looked at the dog, I thought this was some kind of a weird cow, but it actually is a dog. He's got something in his mouth here. And then I love the kind of cartoony paw. That's cool. All right. So we have feminine energy for the magician. And the elements are not um, obviously represented. We do have perhaps kind of a watery element here. There's a, there's a, very, there's a softness and a wateriness to her, the shape of her body. Perhaps we have fire, but we also have wands here. I can tell this is a deck that's going to take um, its time, uh, take its time in revealing itself. And every time you look at the cards, you're going to see something different, which is, it's really nice to have decks, you know, and most decks do that. But I just have a feeling that this deck is going to take a while to get to know. We have the crawfish here, the crayfish. And so I'll put this to the side and we'll have a look at this when the moon card comes up. So lots of um, lunar energy here with the High Priestess, as you would expect. Intuitive energy. And then the Empress is our first real mixed um, mythological creature. So the head of a bear. We definitely have a uh, female human chest. And then the legs are half human, half animal. They've got the split the split toe here, looking very lovingly at her cub. Hmm. Love the emperor. Purple is one of my favorite colors. 
I hope in the guidebook she lets us know what some of the plants are because that, you know, with the hedge witch and all that, it's it's good to kind of bring in that energy and this will expand my knowledge. Love his tartan. That's really beautiful. Hmm. The colors are a little more saturated than in the line strider. I just, I've got the line strider here. Actually, no, they're not. It's a different coloration than the line strider. Hmm. Here, look. So here's the owl, the hierophant. And then this is the owl of the lion strider. So you've got quite a different, a different look. Hmm. All right, cool. She said the sagacious owl. And this mudra. Okay, so this is important here too. So what is the energy of this mudra? I think it's prana mudra. So it increases the energy of what's around. And depending on whether it's pointing up or pointing down. Hmm. I will have to confirm that. And then we have two frogs as the lovers in the moonlight, in the full moon. So what, there's a, it feels very, this deck feels very watery. And so there's going to be a lot of lunar and feminine, mental, intuitive energy with this. Sorry, I bumped the tripod. Ooh, the chariot. Okay, so we have the fieriness of the chariot represented here by the mer, the mermaid's tail and fin body here. We have the lunar energy. So we have two, it looks like carps, koi, here. And they are harnessed. And look how gentle and soft her face looks. And it almost looks here like she is um, dancing with them as opposed to controlling them. It's kind of, yeah. It's beautiful. And the lion has a very cartoony look. The lion is with a swan. That is cool. So for me with swan, I kind of go with the energy of Saraswati. I look to the throat chakra, to the, you know, talking about your truth, to um, everything that's represented through the, the purification of the throat. So, and mantra, music, things like that. But I'll have to explore that a little bit more. So there is some kind of a harness. The, the swan has harnessed the lion. And then the hermit. We have a huge lantern. So the hare has the body of a human. And then we have the moon here as well too. So more moon energy. Kind of like that hermit. And I haven't been checking the body positions. We have a lot of front facing bodies so far. Hair is facing in, in a direction. And then the wheel of fortune. Okay, so we have the birds. This bird is looking like going down, moving toward perhaps a less, um, a more challenging time. This bird is focused to the center. What else we got here? Of course, if the wheel is moving in a clockwise direction, then the wheel does not always move in a clockwise direction. Kind of a interesting wheel. In the, in the justice, we're not balanced, so that's important. In the justice card, sometimes the scales are balanced. I think that's important to bring in, important consideration to bring into the to a reading. Just checking my viewfinder here. Let's nudge these up a bit. I'm looking straight on the cards today instead of upside down, which is um, easier for doing a first impressions. But sometimes the the viewfinder is it's harder for me to see. Hanged man, ooh, looks like the um, the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf, very very grumpy big bad wolf. 
with human legs. Oh, I like the death card. This reminds me of another deck. I can't think what it is right now. And definitely going to look up this flower. I hope I'm just actually let's go to the I'm just going to let you know if she describes the flowers for each of the cards. No, she doesn't name the flowers. She just speaks to the the new growth that is represented by the flowers and that the bird has made his home in the skull. So that's I really like that illustration. And then here we have a um um <laughs> a um, mergel and uh, we have angel wings on a mer body and what else we got here there's some little tiny fish in the water so usually with the temperance card it's nice to see the balance of fire and water so perhaps the fish being an orange color represent the fire but there's no obvious um balancing here of we do have of course air and water perhaps fire here but like I said first impressions holy cow look at this this is crazy so we have her face is covered here we definitely have a woman's body we have the hooves here of the devil there's a lot going on in this picture and then we have it's like a two-headed creature like her heads are attached have to examine these cards that really close the tower has tons of energy so we have the the water the tsunami here the fire the tower is on fire so the tower is being destroyed by water by fire and by lightning that's kind of cool I like to that's nice to have like all those um, elements to speak to in a reading and then the star so again, a more female body, beautiful bird head. Wow, that's amazing. And then here she's pouring the water, the jug of water back into the earth. Hmm. So kind of nice to look at that card with the temperance card, just to kind of, there's, I think there's a connection between temperance and the star Sometimes it's more obvious than others. Okay, and then we go to the moon. So we do have the crawfish here, the crayfish, or the lobster, whatever you want to call it. And then, can you see? I haven't been checking my camera. There we have the high priestess. So you have your two strong lunar energy cards. I like that. I like the simplicity of this drawing. Also, that we really can't identify, you know, the animals, the species of the animals. It's more about, you know, just the energy of the card. Ooh, sun. So we have a rabbit. Sunflower. Here's the sun card from the Line Strider. I think I'm going to do um, a side-by-side -side of these two decks, just so you can see them side-by-side. -side. But let's get through this first impressions. Okay. And then we have judgment. So we have the bear. I like this a lot. The egg here. And this bear energy. This looks very um, protective. So when the, you know, the egg hatches, this bear is going to look after what is revealed. And so, so know that. This is really cool. As you go through these stages of development, there will be this kind of protective energy to look after you or something like that. This is great. I love that card. Hmm. Judgment. And then the world. So we have another hare or rabbit. I'm not an expert in that department, but it looks more like a hare. Long legs. All right. And then we have cups. I love the fish. The fish on this deck, I've seen a couple pictures, seem to be more like... Um, all koi you know like the Japanese koi which is um, represents luck but they're also really you know solid fish big fish kind of magical too 
And so the Ace of Cups, right, which is about, could be about in a romantic reading about love or something like that, emotions, the beginning of, um, a, you know, a surgence of emotion or intuition or, or um, a new idea, thought as well too, intuitive thought, I mean. But we have these fiery little bits here. So we have fire and water. Fire and water in the Ace of Cups. And the fish are a fiery color in the Two of Cups. Okay, this one's a little harder to see. I've seen this, you know, Three of Cups, a few decks are, have done this with otters. But these don't look like otters to me. They look more like seals. Playful seals. And then we have some kind of a water lily here. Hmm. Octopus, Four of Cups. So like her other deck, there it's not one of those decks where you're going to have four cups or five cups um, in the in the cup cards. There's a lot of other symbolism to look to and to kind of get to know and research. Like if you want to research the energy of the octopus or the energy of the um, seals. And here we have a fish head on the female body. We have the broken cups here, the or the broken eggs here. These ones are fine. So this is an example where she ha does have the traditional imagery. So we have three plus two, two are broken, three are whole. This is the right side of her body. This is the left side of the body. So you could bring that into the, to the reading as well too. So the brokenness is on the right side. And what needs to be kind of left behind is the brokenness of the um, the masculine side, the masculine energy, the, the fiery energy, if you wanted to go there. Right? That's what I mean. Like you can bring in so much when there's different facings, when there's different colors. If you want to bring in the energy of the color green, the six of cups, either green as a healing energy or bringing in heart chakra energy. Um, you could speak to the, the love of this relationship. Beautiful. I love the expressions on their faces. And the flowiness, the movement. And here we have another octopus. So definitely going to do a little bit of research in octopus energy, medicine. I know octopus, octopi have multiple hearts, which is something that I've kind of wanted to read up on. And if you look closely here, we have a cup, can't see what that is, a branch. This looks like a diamond. Pearls, this is snake here. And this also reminds me of one of the, you know, the goddesses in the Hindu pantheon. So sometimes they're pictured with multiple arms and each of the arms is holding a different tool. And so at different times, different tools are going to bring us uh, aid and we need to choose the tool that is going to help us and usually with the um, goddess says those tools are about um, destroying the ego but it is seven of cups so we're talking about delusion but you definitely could go that way so that's a cool option and we have more green here eight of cups broken heart and this, while this looks kind of uh, like feminine energy, this also at the same time, there's this something on the skin here. It's very scaly. There's a, a seal here or an otter. And there's the something spilling here behind him or her. What I was going to say was this is not, um, it seems to be more of a gender fluid creature. And I like that. Nine of Cups. Ooh, so this is it looks like a little bit like Winnie the Pooh. So the bees are circling around the head of the bear. The bear has perhaps the honey dripping here. 
So read into that what you will. Um, right? So I like this because the honey has been taken away from the bees, which, you know, is abundance to the bear, but scarcity to the bees. We often don't, you know, bring that kind of discussion into a Nine of Cups card. And here we have the Ten of Cups. Beautiful color. I like how their tails are intertwined. We got the baby. There's some baby seahorses here. And then Page of Cups. So the same kind of fish strong fish energy, um, more anthropomorphic, right? The fish is actually holding the cup here and there's all kinds of male. So she's kind of going to the pages as messengers, which is a real traditional meaning for the pages as opposed to um, the pages as just new beginnings. And when they appear in readings with aces, you know, kind of looking to that and then of course the energy of the card so the new beginning of everything that's represented by the element of water okay this is um <laughs> mer person with a mushroom head um i need to kind of think about what this might represent on the seahorse so we have the knight of cups he's holding a cup riding a seahorse the queen is really, oh, she's so happy in her element. So content, I should say, in her element. Complete Santosha. Mm. And she's sitting on a pedestal. So that's right. She's not moving. She's actually seated. The tail is wrapped around a pedestal here. And again, we have that uh, balance of fire and water. It's not just all watery colors. And the same with the king. We have blue and we have fire and water showing a really kind of uh, a balanced leader. I love his starfish crown. Okay, so we've seen like, what, four octopus so far, four octopi. Ace of Wands is perhaps an anteater. We have the idea of fertility here, perhaps. We have the um, baby with his birthday hat on. That's kind of cute. I like that. So, yes, um, a desert, more desert animal. And then we have a frog. So why do we have a frog? The frog does have a red bandana around his neck, a red scarf. Very rider weight symbol here. But we have mm, an animal of both land and sea. So not land and sea, land and lake. Okay, this is a chameleon, some kind of an iguana. So again, an animal of the desert. We have wands. Looks like he's got rubber boots on. And looking, you know, looking ahead toward something. Something is being left behind. We've got the, the village in the background. And he's got his binoculars there. This could be bleeding heart, but I have a feeling this is more of a tropical plant. And then the frog is sitting in this circle of the plant growth here, four of wands. So instead of having the, the usual... Um, structure we have the structure created by nature here and we have a frog which I wouldn't think of as another frog here so we have why do we have all these frogs in the suit of wands I can almost hear the struggle in the five of wands but again I want to know why we have all these frogs here frogs don't to me speak the chameleon here, or this iguana, works perfectly well. Um, and he's got the typical symbology here, the, the bay leaf, the laurel wreath. So let me know what you think about that, all these kind of frogs in the suit of fire. Are frogs a fiery creature? Seven of wands. So this 
little creature here looks like he's not sure what this guy's going to do next. When I think of the seven of wands, I think of there's a sense of strength. There's a sense of I've got this. I, I, yeah, I need to defend myself. But this guy looks like he doesn't have, he's not very self-assured, which is an unusual facial expression, I think, for that card. For the eight, okay, so we have two, looks like fast moving animals moving in this direction. So moving upward and to the left. Again, nice to have cards that bring in direction. Nine of wands, quite typical Rider Waite Smith uh, symbolism there. And then the 10 as well, with the mouse carrying the burden. Page, light bulb, new ideas, creating a new idea. Usually with the light bulb, I would think of like the new thought would be with the, with the swords, but can, can go with that. This yellow really stands out here. So nice to have the that fiery energy with the Knight of Wands. So is the Knight actually riding something or just... It's hard to tell because... Oh yes, there is a Knight here. Here we have... So this looks like the head of the Knight. And there's a body here on this animal, on the fox perhaps. So you need to look really carefully at some of these images to figure out what they are. This looks like like a Noel Coward play to me. Um, it is the queen. So again, we have that kind of uh, gender fluidity with with the queen, which is which is really cool. And do you see this? Her crown is floating above the head, so she's not attached to her royal royalness, her royalty. And same here with the tiger. Love the color on the tiger, the king of wands. And so he is facing his queen. And then the ace of swords. The rooster is on, looks like a high mountain peak here. So we have the energy of, you know, the height, the air, the airiness. Roosters, I don't typically think of as birds of flight, but they are, you know, kind of, powerful they do make a loud noise so sound is represented with this element and then she's brought in the color green so I do like that and that's kind of a subtle connection connecting the heart chakra to this sort to the sorry this suit the color green representing um, the heart chakra and also the heart chakra is the element of air and not many creators bring that connection in so i I really appreciate that. <laughs> so this is what the emu or the ostrich with the head in the sand. That's really nice. I like that. Three of swords. So I'm not sure if the bird is f falling here or the bird is just uh, expressing pain. There's no blood. The three swords are... This one has definitely pierced the pierced the bird. So there's definitely a sense of agony with that card. Four of swords. Looks like an owl. So the owl, this may be a nest. The owl is resting in the nest. And then we have the super fiery energy here. Sorry, I keep touching the tripod. The rooster with the five of swords. And love that she made this such a brilliant color for the five of swords. I can just hear these roosters. And roosters are so, can be so aggressive and so violent. I think that's a perfect animal for the five of swords. For the six, we have... Um, Fairy-like creatures, perhaps. This looks more like a lion face on the youngin, on the youngin, riding the swan away from this scenario here. The 
There's a real gentleness in this picture. And then we have a toucan head. Interesting that she didn't choose to color the toucan, right? Because usually toucans are quite brilliantly colored birds. We have the color green again. So you can speak to that. And there's a sense here of, look at, look at his pants. Like he's, he's definitely been through something. I'm kind of moving in a new direction with the Seven of Swords. And I think it's important with each deck to look at the details and, you know, not go in with a fixed, predetermined reading, but to just give the cards some consideration. This is kind of cool. So this bird has the choice to eat these, eat this fruit or not, to eat these berries. Um, this looks like it could easily slip off, right? It's not a hooded bird. The mouth is open. And the color red, right? The red is an obvious color here. So I would definitely go to that and have a look at, you know, fear and everything that is associated with the color red. And then we have a mouse for the nine of swords. And I like that the mouse has stopped. The mouse is looking back. And so giving consideration, there is a, perhaps an element of fear here, but there's also a sense of, okay, I've got this. I've taken a breath. Now, which way am I going to go? And where am I going to hide until the morning? All right. Peacock or peahen. So again, a brilliantly colored bird with no color. And we've got the green color here for the heart chakra for the element of air. And for me, I've really been looking at the Ten of Swords as the, the end of wrestling with the mind. The end of wrestling with the mind. So there's some kind of surrender of always wanting to be in control. And of course, it is the end of a cycle, but it's the end of that kind of me, 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 me -ness. At least that's something that's been coming up for me a lot lately. And then here we have the page. And again, we have, you've got mail. And the page is looking directly at the message. So what is the message? Knight of Swords. It's a very, um, very active card. I don't like that the sword almost looks like it could damage the bird that he's riding, but or a uh, maim or hurt, but it's not touching it. And then the queen, the queen is on her perch. Again, the crown is floating above her head. She's not wearing it. And then we have a what kind of bird is this? I'm not sure. Is it a, it's not a flamingo, is it? Some kind of a pelican. And then this sword is in the back right. So the crown is on the sword, not on the, not on the king itself. And the king is on, is perched on a, on a branch. Both the king and the queen are perched on branches. And then the final suit of pentacles. For, so we're going back to the purples. And we have a fox. So yes, I would have put this on the Ace of Fire, perhaps. Because for me, pentacles, not pentacles, foxes represent magic. And there's a sense of, definitely a sense of fieriness. But we're at the element of earth. So we have perhaps animals on the ground. Right? Animals of the air, animals of the, of the ground. And some kind of a marsupial I'm not gonna try to figure out what this is love the eyes the beady eyes and usually when we think of these kind of monkey-esque creatures they have tremendous balance but there's something that is you know bringing there's something that is alarming the the creature and for the three of pentacles we have a a beehive so that works perfectly well and she's got blue here. So you want to speak to blue. Do you want to speak to purple? I love that. I really like working with colors. So 
um, for me, that's something I will be bringing in with this deck. Super kind of solid gorilla type here. Um, firmly planted on the earth. We've got a real kind of square shape of the animal. So, you know, solid, solid foundation, security, no worries about money, but is there a sense of grasping? You know, is it too much? Does he ever move? Does he share? Five of pentacles. So the mouse has the cup. It's a pentacle here. And looks like somebody's taken a bite out of the ear. Crutches. Mm. Definitely, you know, see the, the Rider Waite Smith um, imagery there. So that's easy to work with. And then the Six of Pentacles. So we have wheat. Wheat for abundance, fertility. This, and there's also a scale. Where's the other scale? So the scales are here. And the wheat is being shared. But why is this little mousy looking off in this direction and not paying attention to this little mousy down here? That might be significant. Seven. Really pretty color on this card. So we have the green almost thrown back here. These beautiful flowers emerging. And this fox with humanist, human legs sitting on a mushroom waiting patiently and then we have a wolf-like creature for the eight diligently working away and then we have a bird for the nine so we do see birds typically in in this suit so we have the the feminine energy here and there's often a, a peacock in this in a Rider Waite Smith deck too I've seen peacocks often on this card. Yeah. And the energy of blue again. So blues and greens. For the 10, we have a fox family. This could be a different animal. Love the little baby fox. Moon energy. Heart. Heart chakra. Hmm. And the page, love the page, kind of, I don't know, class clowny kind of page, very fun. <laughs> I like the, the jester's neck piece. And the knight of pentacles, I like that. Sorry. I'm not laughing. I just think it's really good, really well done. And I like the perspective too, right? This tortoise looks enormous compared to the, to the knight. And there is something on the knight's hat, um, the hat, headpiece, right? It looks like a tail, but maybe it's a bird. I don't know what it is. And then we have the queen. So just noticing again, so lots of the animals facing in different directions, which is super helpful for reading. And then here's her king. You see that? Okay. So the king and the queen are facing each other. Lots of kind of magic around him. Prosperity. He's well-dressed, well-decorated. And so is she. But there's also a sense of, I like this. It looks like confetti. It looks like fun. You know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look stuck at all, which is great. So yeah, so quite a different feel from the line strider. And I will definitely do a side by side at some point because that would be, I think, worthwhile and, and really helpful in um, kind of understanding the energy, the different energy of the two of the two decks. And both of the decks speak to that liminal space between um between this this plane this reality and and the next so i'm going to shuffle the cards and then lay out um all of her decks for a reading let's finish this off with a quick reading i have shuffled the decks and we have the new decks so the other kin here this is the lion strider 
Hedge Witch, and this is the Lenormand deck. So I'm going to pull three cards from here and one card from each of these decks. So just take a breath in and a breath out and bring to mind something that you would like clarity on. And hopefully this reading will be of some help for you today. So the Hangman, well, that doesn't really bring us clarity. That, to me, is very much a card about taking some time. So like the Hermit, this is about a card of looking at things from a different direction. This is not so much about um, going away to retreat or creating space for that, but this is about really choosing to look at things from a different perspective. So in order to do that, we need to step back. We need to step back. We need to be quiet and we need to look at the whatever's going on from a, the big picture rather than focusing on the me, me, me of the situation. So how is, you know, how is everyone else doing in this situation? And are you taking into consideration, you know, the feelings, the opinions of everyone else that is around you? How can you look at whatever's going on from, you know, from a bigger, from a bigger perspective? So this has been kind of a real challenging time we have the five of swords here and there may have been some very painful words that were shared there you know you may have regrettably said something to someone that you love dearly um, and that has caused you a great deal of anguish and so now taking time to figure out how you're going to heal from this situation is is really important rather than just um Putting it behind you, you need to kind of within yourself um, have a new perspective of whatever has just happened here. And remember what I said in the walkthrough to go to the element of swords as air, and air, of course, is mind, communication, breakdown of communication in this situation. Um, but also, there is an element of heart with this. And so this hurts. This hurts very, very much. And so this plant here might bring some, you know, healing energy and some sense of hope. And we can also look to the color yellow as well, too. So yellow represents the Mani Buddha Chakra, the, the solar plexus. And so I spoke to you, like, you need to get out of the me, 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 getting out of the ego, away from the ego, and really looking at this from your heart, from a bigger perspective, so that you can heal and move forward, so that you can move. Like, St. John's Wort is such... A lovely, you know, calming, nurturing kind of energy. And the key word here is stabilize. So this at this time, in order for you to heal from this situation, you really need to, you know, not run away and avoid it. You need to kind of deal with everything that you are feeling and everything that's going on in your in your head. So I'm just going to pull three Lenormand cards just to Kind of wind this up and if we can get any more insight into this situation perhaps if there's anything that you have forgotten or something that you need to bring awareness to to the situation okay so dog right speaks to loyalty to friendship so if and i in lenormand i never read cards singly but i do want to address this because if these words if this, these words were shared with those that you love, that you're most loyal of friends, you know, this is really, really important that you figure out a way to get through this. And you will get through this, right? This is very much a card of hope. And this, these two cards together are both super positive. So you taking time to figure out how it is or why you said what you said and kind of looking at the lesson of this experience from a new perspective um, is going to be really, really good for you, really healing for you. And I want you to know that having these positive cards up here means that you've got this. You just need to do the work. And this is going to bring you so much 
stability probably in this relationship you may have needed to have this have it out with your best friend um or this person who means a lot to you or people who mean a lot to you because when i do a reading right these people are your anchor and so taking the time to do this reflection is really really important but please know that you know it's definitely worth it do not abandon those that were part of of whatever that whatever happened i trust that this reading is working its magic for whoever needed to hear these words thank you for watching namaste